All right, we're moving now on to the main thrust of this presentation, and it's all based on correct principles. In any endeavor you want to talk about in life, whether it's farming, whether it's uh, engineering, there are correct principles and there are incorrect principles. It is the entire thrust of this presentation that feeding kibble is based on incorrect principles and that feeding raw is based on correct principles. Well, what are the correct principles of feeding? They're basically two, okay? We're gonna get into two basic principles. And so let's start off with the first principle. Principle number one is feed any animal what it is biologically designed to eat. What does that mean? Okay, think about this. Really deeply think about this. Every animal on the face of this earth came into being based on the need to eat something. What does that mean? There are insects all over the place. And there are a lot of different animals that, are, that evolved to eat insects, lizards, other insects. Every animal, its basic definition, its entire function is based on what it eats. You have grazing animals to control plant populations so that there's not an overgrowth of uh, plants. You have rats that eat grains and seeds everywhere, birds that eat seeds everywhere. And so if you're going to raise rats or raise uh, uh, birds, you got to feed them the seeds that they're supposed to eat. Cows, you can't feed cows rocks and sticks and things like that. You've got to eat them the grasses that they're supposed to eat. Um, it goes all the way to every single animal in the animal kingdom. It, it, is, it was evolved to eat something. Therefore, that something, that thing it's supposed to eat, or in some cases, many things. And here's where it becomes complicated. We humans are omnivores. An omnivore... Well, let me back up. There's two great divisions of kinds of animal, carnivores and herbivores. Carnivores eat meat. Uh, herbivores eat plants. Well, there's a third division, and I'm sure you've all heard of it, omnivores. You have uh, creatures, including we creatures, we human beings, are omnivores. We will eat uh, plant matter and we'll eat uh uh, meat matter, uh, other animals. <clears throat> Omnivores are always going to be better able to survive simply because there's a greater variety of what they can eat. To show you uh, how that works in the reverse, I happen to be a, a reptile freak. I like snakes, so I know a lot about them, so I'm going to tell you a little story, and it's going to be relevant to what we're talking about. There's some species of snakes, for instance, the king cobra. I'm sure you've all heard of the king cobra. Its scientific name is Ophiophagus hanna. What does Ophiophagus mean? Ophio means snake, phagus, eater. The king cobra is a snake eater. It, that's all it will eat. Now, I happen to have friends who raise snakes, and that's all a king cobra is going to eat is a snake. You can put anything else in there, a rat, a rabbit. It may bite it and kill it, but it's not going to eat it. King cobras eat and only eat snakes. That means they're highly specialized. Their entire function is to eat other snakes. Well, in the snake raising industry, um, that's a problem. Most people don't want to feed their other expensive snakes to their king cobras. So what they've done is they trick the king cobra. They will take a, a dead snake or even a live snake and they'll rub a dead rat all over the snake and they'll, and they'll get the smell of the snake on the rat and then they'll put the dead rat in there, and the king cobra will get fooled, and it'll eat it now, and that's called scenting. You may think that's a good idea. Well, my friend who raises king cobras told me that his snakes look bad. They look terrible, and he went over to Bill Host, a very famous snake breeder, and looked at his king cobras that were vibrant. They were glowing with health. He says, how come your snakes look so much better than mine, Bill? Bill said, because I'm feeding them snakes, what they're supposed to eat. You're feeding them rats. They're not biologically equipped to process hair. While one snake, like a king snake or a rat snake or a gopher snake, is biologically prepared to digest the fur of rats, king cobras are not. Consequently, even though it's flesh, even though it's raw, 
even the species, the kind of animal in some cases, can create health problems for snakes. All right, now let's just think about that for a second, how important what an animal eats is to its very identity, its very health. How does that pertain to dogs? Well, it pertains to dogs in this way. Dogs are essentially carnivores. They do have some omnivorous capabilities, uh, meaning that they will eat some plants in the forms of they may graze a little, they may eat a berry here or a little piece of fruit there. I mean, they're opportunists, but their preference, what they really need is meat. Um, and this is all part of basic principle number one. Feed the animal what it's really supposed to eat, and that's raw. I mean, that's uh, raw whole animals. Uh, in nature, they're going to eat rabbits, voles, gophers, uh, quail, ptarmigan, pheasant, occasional goat here, maybe a pack of wolves will, will find a sick elk or a moose and dispatch it and eat it. But they're going to eat meat predominantly. They'll eat the guts, they'll eat the organs, they'll eat the bones, they'll eat the fat, and that is what a dog thrives on. Because dogs are designed to survive in nature, yeah, they can, they can survive on other things, you know, eat a little bit of plants here and a little bit of plants there, but that's not their preference. So, to follow basic principles, the first principle you can possibly follow, regardless of the animal, kind of animal you're keeping, is feed it what it's supposed to eat. Think and remember, every animal on the face of this earth gets its very identity from what it eats. It, it's its function in life. Its niche in the ecosystem is to eat something specific. It can be as specific as a king cobra. All it eats are snakes. Or they can be more generalized, like a dog. They eat various different things. But yet, the predominating factor in a dog, though it may eat other kinds of animal, is the fact that they eat other animals. Therefore, some animal flesh, bones, organs, is what you should be feeding your dog. How that pertains to kibble is almost every kind of kibble on the face of this earth has things your dog is not supposed to eat. Not only is it not raw and cooked, but wheat, sorghum, rice, uh, brewer's rice, uh, soybeans. Dogs don't eat that stuff. And if you're feeding this stuff to your dogs, you're feeding an animal that's designed to eat meat something it wouldn't ever eat in the wild. If a dog's going to eat something, it's going to eat some kind of grass or some kind of fruit. It's not going to eat grains and corn and things of this nature. So, to follow basic principles, the first principle you have to start out with is to feed any animal you keep. doesn't matter what it is. Excuse me, i got a bug in my face. Uh, no matter what it is, feed it what it's supposed to eat and nothing else. And then you're following principle number one of effective animal ownership. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay, now, and the second principle, basic principle to feeding, is once you get it straight, uh, what any given animal should eat, the next step is to feed that thing, whatever it is, in its most biologically available form biological availability. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. It's the key to everything. And that's where raw comes in. These dogs that you have and that I have uh, are biologically designed to process raw foods, not cooked foods. Again, as has been mentioned, um, the idea that the way we cook our food when we eat somehow justifies cooking kibble all the way down to little dry pellets is a folly. It's a violation of principle. It's dishonest. You'll see on uh, anti-raw websites, they say, we've been, we've been eating cooked food for years, never hurt us. Well, we don't cook our food like we cook kibble for a dog. So it's just void right there. And uh, I've already discussed uh, uh, why cooking food is done to alleviate parasites. Well, a dog that is in the dirt running around is getting parasites anyway, so we treat them for parasites. There's really no reason uh, to worry about cooking the food for the dog because we give them ivermectin, we give them all kinds of uh, drugs to uh, remove their parasites on a monthly or every other monthly basis. But the principle, I digress a lot, I got ADD, but uh, the principle that we're talking about here is feeding what you have to feed your dog, 
in its best possible fashion, and that is wrong. Um, I'm going to show uh, a portion of this film uh, what happens to kibble when you put it out in the dirt. It sits there. Nothing eats it. I mean, I'm, uh, if you take a bag of kibble and you s stick it in a room, it sits there day in, day out, week after week. It doesn't stink. It doesn't rot. Why is that? Because nothing wants to eat it. It's destroyed. The food value, the biological availability is destroyed in the kibbling process. That's why it doesn't rot. The very fact that you can't put a piece of meat in a room and just leave it there, it'll stink, rot, de decompose right away, is because of how biologically available raw food is. Transfer it into the stomach of a dog and you have the same phenomenon. You have, uh, you put all this kibble in, in the dog's stomach and the digestive juices just can't break it down in the same way that it can raw food. You put, uh, uh, you have a dog eat a, a chicken quarter, let's say, it's in and out of that dog in about eight hours, completely digested, little bitty stool output, and we're gonna show all this on video, the stool output and everything. You're gonna have little bitty stool output. What does that mean? It means all of what the dog ate was used. It was biologically available, the digestive juices ate it up, and so just, Hardly anything comes out. It doesn't work that way with kibble. Because the food was destroyed in the kibbling process, because the biological availability uh, was compromised, when the dog gets the kibble in its stomach, it, it doesn't do much with it. It eats a little bit, I mean, it processes a little bit of it, but you have these great big long pasty turds that come out of the dog. Why? Because as much as the digestive enzymes tried, most of the solid mass went right through the dog. So. The two basic principles of effective feeding an animal are one, what it's supposed to eat, and two, feeding that something that the animal's supposed to eat, in our case dogs, raw, whole animals. The whole animals are what they're supposed to eat, not a little dry pellets, but in its raw, natural form. That's how the dog is supposed to process it. That's how it processes it best. And if you follow these two principles, your dogs will thrive. If you fail to follow these two principles, you feed your dogs corn, wheat, sorghum. You violate principle one by not even feeding your dog what it's supposed to eat, which almost every kibble company in existence does, you're falling on your face right off the bat. Your dog's going to get breakdown. And then you fail in the second way by cooking the bejesus out of it and destroying all the nutrients. That's why you see dogs lose hair all over their face. That's why they they start losing hair on their paws. They start getting uh, autoimmune disorders, lupus thyroid problems, cancers, uh, lymphosarcomas. The reason why all these kibble-fed dogs are falling apart is a violation of the two most basic principles of feeding. Principle one, feed them what they're supposed to eat. Principle two, feed that something they're supposed to eat in its most available, biologically available form. That is for the optimum health of the animal. Kibble feeders fail in both respects usually, and even the top kibbles that we've seen, uh, the Origins, the Inova Evos and things like that, they fail in principle number two. They're not, they try to get the best ingredients in there, but they fail by not providing it in the most biologically available form, which is simply raw. So that said, now let's talk about best practice. We've covered the myths. We've covered uh, the basic principles. Upon these basic principles will the fate of your program and your dogs be based. And so let's talk about doing things right now instead of everything wrong. Let's go.